What is up, Big Fat Failure Turtle Sprite 145 back, and this is a Modern Warfare 2 video. Now, a couple of apologies before we get into the depth of this video. The RTC cannot continue. Reasons being, theatre mode bugged out on me after the previous update, and I lost the majority of the videos that were saved on there. And B, my hard drive also bugged out. And I tried to load files, load save files that hadn't been touched in a while and just said cannot find this file. I'm like, oh really? So in all fairness, it wasn't the best RTC in the world. I will definitely do one on one Warfare 3. Because that game hopefully is gonna be better. And apology number two, lack of content. College has just taken over again. It's that time where unfortunately hard work takes over. Now, the title of this video will be something along the lines of Sprite 145 does psychology. I haven't quite decided what the title is going to be yet, but it's Nuke 253. Nuke 252 is broken. It was another thermal MG nuke, so it wasn't the best in the world. I might just upload it anyway, no sound. I'll consider it. But this game plays longer by a good couple of minutes, so I thought, you know, this gameplay will be better. So we're going to talk about psychology today. Psychology is a very interesting topic. Topic? Topic. And there's a couple of theories and whatnot that I would like to, um, you know, share with you. Um, based on the little bits of scribble that I've got in my notepad, I've planned this commentary out, I've been planning it for a while, and I'm deciding, because I've got some free time today, um, that we're going to deliver it. So first of all, we're going to talk about, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> yeah, I told you. <coughs> anyway, we're going to talk about knack and NAF, which are the need to achieve and the need to avoid failure. Now, we're going to apply these psychological things to video games as much as possible. I'm doing an applied psychology unit at college, but that's for sports science. So, uh, some of it's relatable, so I took the bits that were relatable. So, basically, the need to achieve is people constantly set themselves high goals and constantly challenge themselves. In aspect of video games, that is setting yourself high kill streaks using random guns that you've never used before because you want to challenge and you enjoy a challenge. And the need to avoid failure, NAF, setting yourself low goals. So, for example, low kill streaks, easy to use guns and you're quite content finishing mid-table. So, me, I would actually consider myself a need to achieve because I'm constantly setting myself high kill streaks. I'm using... I've mixed the guns up a bit. I do mix guns up every now and then. So, and need to avoid failure. There's there's some contradiction around that because just because you set yourself low kill streaks, it doesn't always mean you have the need to avoid failure. For example, people can use UAV counter UAV and a third kill streak of their choice very effectively and become a team player, which to an extent makes them a uh, need to achieve. So it's kind of contradictory, but you get the main gist of the theory. Now, second thing we're going to talk about is introvert and extrovert in terms of personality types um, and the stable and neurotic side of things. So first of all an introvert is someone that generally keeps himself to themselves, doesn't do well in group situations most of the time whereas an extro extrovert is completely the opposite. An extrovert will be outgoing pretty much a party animal um, consider this, if you play The Sims 3 or you've played The Sims, especially The Sims 3, there's two traits, there's like loner and party animal. So consider the introvert, the quote unquote loner, consider the extrovert, the quote unquote party animal. This isn't always true, and I'll explain why in a bit. Now the stable and neurotic side of things is... Um, pretty difficult to explain without drawing things and I'm not that good with Sony Vegas yet so 
a stable introvert was someone that would always, in a pressure situation or a situation that they're not used to, fall back into their their tortoise shell, so to speak. I wouldn't officially call it a tortoise sh shell, but you know what I mean. And a stable extrovert would always want to be loud and known and whatnot. The neurotic is a bit more difficult because they don't know what they are, to be honest. You can be a neurotic introvert and some of the time you're introverted and want to keep yourself to yourself, but other times you want to be out there, you, you want to be seen. It's very difficult to explain, but you, you get the main idea. So now we're going to talk about um, different type of personalities and rewards in terms of video games. And we'll, we'll backtrack just a second. I consider myself introverted in every way, shape or form. I'm I'm not a big outgoing person. I might mic it, meh, make out to be on YouTube, but that's different. Real life, I'm, I'm introverted 80% of the time. I, I see nothing wrong with that. That's just the way I've been brought up and in a future video because I am going to try and make this a series if possible I will talk about why I'm introverted or why theories say I'm introverted. So um, intrinsic and extrinsic rewards. Intrinsic rewards are rewards that people set themselves so like having high kill to death ratios, having um, high win loss ratios, good points per minute or points per second you know they and to an extent both people um, I'll, I'll cover that in a second actually extrinsic rewards like partnerships, machinima contracts, being big and out there but also both intrinsic and extrinsic reward or people that see themselves as wanting them because there's two different types, a type A and a type B personality. The type A is extrinsic, which means they want the partnerships and machinima contract, whereas a type B is intrinsic and wants the high scores and whatnot. But both of them, to a degree, could set themselves a goal, say, I want this many subs, I want 100,000 subs, I want 250,000 subs. And, and so again, sometimes psychology can contradict itself. Now we're going to talk about arousal and motivation. One word of advice, don't go anywhere because it's mum. She's bad for the arousal levels. <laughs> no, in all seriousness. Sorry Charlie. Um, three theories to do with arousal and motivation. The drive theory, the inverted U theory and the catastrophe theory. Um, the drive theory is the more aroused you are the better your performance is. In terms of video games that means the more you're enjoying the game, the more fun you're having, the less pissed off you are, the better you're going to do. There's no drop off point, literally, it's a never ending diagonal line from 0, zero on a graph, the origin, going up to 100, 100 and whatnot. And that is it. The drive theory says the more into something you are, the better you will do. The inverted U theory. We'll consider all of these graphs on a a standard graph going from a y-axis and an x-axis to 100 each, okay? So the inverted U theory is suggests that you reach your peak and then you have a steady drop-off. So for example, um, uh, how to describe this? Inverted U theory. You so you get your nuke, okay, and then it slowly goes to shit. So you can sort of get halfway to another nuke, but just something goes wrong and it keeps going to shit. Um, that graph on 100 to 100 starts at naught naught, or the origin again, and say so you get to about halfway, so 50 50 on the graph. So you've reached your peak which is about halfway and then you just drop off and slowly go down whereas the catastrophe theory suggests that again you hit your peak but then you just 
massively decline. Next video, I will try and put some graphs up at the end of the end of the video just to show you what I mean by inverted U, drive, and catastrophe theory. Um, that's pretty much covered about everything as well. I'm sorry if you didn't understand it all, but I only had 10 minutes. I thought I planned it really well, but anyway. This is um, Sprite145 saying hopefully next week we'll have another psychology commentary up. Um, if there's anything in particular psychologically you want me to discuss and do research on, please let me know by all means. I'll happily do research on it and find out what I can about it. But my big fat failure turtles, it's been wonderful talking to you again. This is Sprite145 signing out, wishing you a wonderful day. Peace, guys.